Welcome, Donny, to Metalidium Pages. It's our glad pleasure to talk with you again because we spoke in 2022 for the first Acoustic Adventures album. So now we are we are talking about, from, about as usually from Sonata Artica, this new album Clear Call Beyond, and obviously more things related to the metal world. So we are starting by asking uh, a common we start by asking a common question. So how has the band been during the last well during the last years? Because you you release Acoustic and Bedros in two two in two parts. Your last album with new songs was released, Talbillo, was released in 2019. And now we have this new album, Clear Call Beyond, 2024. Well, yeah, it's been sort of busy and resting at the same time. Obviously, the pandemic thing messed things up a lot. And had we not been able to release those uh, already pre-planned acoustic albums in between, I don't know, what kind of plans we would have had. We probably would not have hit the studio until the pandemic is over. I, I, I think so anyways. And and uh, so that, that was a good thing. And also we managed to uh, tour, have a tour in Europe uh, 10 weeks with the acoustic songs. And so that was something that we got out of our system. We've been dreaming about releasing up acoustic versions of our songs for I don't know, almost 20 years or so. So it was great to finally have that out and tour. And after that long tour, we were very much ready to do something else for a change <laughs> and go back to being the real son of Arctica. And uh, of course, you know, in the, in the meanwhile, we had this uh, 25th anniversary shows where we played a lot of these old son of Arctica. Power metal songs, older stuff in between other songs and, and uh, all those you know, the, it was fan, well, fantastic to see the fans, the reactions and how they loved the old sort of the Arctica and how much energy they got and how much energy we also got from all that. And and uh, now, obviously, it was a, all that put together that uh, sort of made us go back into power metal, the feeling. This is something that we want to have once again. After talking about it for, I don't know, 10 years, every album has had some power metal elements there, but we have never gone as fully into that as we have now with this clear Cold Beyond album. Okay. Well, you have more than 12 albums on, on your career. And now well, you are one of the, also you are one of the leaders uh, into the Finnish power metal around in, in your country. So for this, does, does this new album clear Cold Beyond any different meaning compared to the other ones in the past? Mm, well, it, it's it's a sonata artsy album, but but it's not. It's very much different from Talvio, the previous album. In every way, we have fast songs, like a lot of fast songs, even more than what we had on our early power metal so uh, albums. Uh, but anyhow, sound wise and uh, production wise. Uh, this album is is like uh, continuing from, I'd say, where Reckoning Nights left off after those four albums, and uh, this could have been the follow up album for those. And and I'm, I'm I'm very happy. So they are related in many ways, musically and also artwork wise. They they somehow this album is more early Sonata Arctica than many of the other albums we've released in the past decades and more. Mm. Oh, great, great. And you mentioned that about the reception, from, especially from the old albums and now, especially talking about for the acoustic versions. So how was the reception for these acoustic versions for, so since your point of view? Um, for what I heard and, and what I've talked with people and the tour, what we had, it was a great success and, and people loved and understood what we are doing here. And it definitely these albums and, and versions they gave many of the songs of completely new life and meaning as they were not only merely uh, songs that we played through or not like as normally would, uh, but, but with acoustic instruments, but we actually completely rearranged many of the songs and, and, uh, and even re wrote new parts and bits for a lot of those tracks. There are some songs that we could actually just play as we have done in, in, in the past, like Talula, for example, there's no need to much change it. It's fairly acoustic friendly as is, so we just played it 
acoustic guitar. There are a lot of songs that people would not expect us to play in acoustic form, and they turned out pretty darn good, in my opinion. And, and people loved it, for what I know. But, you know, and I would definitely love to go back there one day, <laughs> maybe when we are a little bit older and and and, and so it, it's a sort of a pension plan at the same time, something that we can always get back to even when we are too old to play the fast stuff because of, that's eventually something that probably might happen at least in the drummer region, drummer area. It's it's when you're hitting your seventy years of age, it's it's getting increasingly difficult to <laughs> maintain the speed of your body. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, as you are one of the one one of the biggest bands in Finland during the power and oh into the power metal scene there. So how you how is your perception of the power metal uh, nowadays in, in general in the world? Because as 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 you can see just the great bands, Blind Guardians, Rotovarius, you, Halloween, the great bands from the power metal are still alive. But the older bands is like the like the same road whether you taken in the nineties this kind of stuff and also there is a new movement with the Jap Japanese power metal that they try to mix the K pop or the pop in general that is more as like a refreshing refreshing thing into the power metal it's not like the old days it's more modern in some ways so what's your point of view now this kind of movement that the Japanese are doing with the pop. Uh, there is plenty of room for all sorts of music and new ways of doing things, and and of course for us old beards, you know, beards, <laughs> you know, doing the things the way we have always done it. It's sometimes weird, and we don't always understand <laughs> what's happening <laughs> when, when the new acts arrive and taking the whole scene by the storm. So, but but it's all good. It's great, fantastic that music stays alive and evolves in the new forms. You might have various opinions of whether or not it's good stuff, but hey, that applies with any any kind of music. You know, you can either love or hate. Some of the Arctica as well, and same applies to a lot of things. But but you know, I I've heard like baby metal, for example, which is probably one of the examples easy to use here, and then and these are a lot of fun, and definitely would be something that I would love to see live as well if they happen to be in town where I am. So it, it's it's uh, it, it it's great that the music is evolving, but also it definitely leaves room for uh, more classic bands, older bands like us and Halloween and, and Stradivarius and such that have been around for I don't know forty years. <laughs> for, how, for how I know, so it, it's 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 all good. I'm I'm just happy that music stays alive also in this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. All the time about Finland, I remember when I was there in 2014 or 15, I remember when I was there in Finland, and I remember that the, the your scene in general is very heavy metal, it's very heavy metal country, because a lot of people, I spoke with a lot of musicians, aches of, of a lot of musicians out in Europe, and all told me that the, the, mo the most heavy metal country in Europe is Finland. Because they 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 when they want to go, there's bar, restaurants, even you will start you are walking on the streets and you can see a lot of metal heads walking on the streets. It's very common that here is very different. Here is very different. You can <laughs> here is very different. So for this question, <laughs> why the why the Finland scene are most more he, more heavy metal fans than the perhaps Germany, perhaps um Swedish, who knows? Who knows? A lot of guns because very different. Mm, yeah, it's, it's funny. There have been like these uh, queries where they've noticed that Finland has most metal bands per capita, mm -hmm. and, and that's that's funny, funny detail. And uh, all about, um, all about uh, the metal music has sort of the popularity has maybe declined a little bit, or I don't I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but or is it just like it's not in the mainstream media's all the time. As it was like in a certain point where even presidential candidates were showing up horns and everything because it's a popular thing to do and uh, you see and hear uh, some the sports and tv programs and such and it was just the biggest thing and that's not the case anymore here so but 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 the fans still remain 
the old fans. The, I think the biggest problem in Finland, albeit that it's, it's very popular here still, Finland is definitely a metal country. Uh, it's it's the future generations who are seems to be into something else for now. So, but 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 I think it's almost one generation of lost metalheads at currently here <laughs> because they like hip hop and such things. They've been quite big big for a long long time already. And uh, but there is hope always in rebellion because you know I I think hip hop. And, and such different things that, are, that the, these days kids were listening to, or their parents were listening to. Like, mm-hmm. if my, I'm listening to heavy metal, then my children rebel by listening to something totally different. Mm-hmm. So now there are parents who grew up listening to hip hop and such, so that hip hop doesn't do the rebellious thing for their parents anymore. But they start, when they get to be teenagers, they start to listen to other things that probably upset their parents like heavy metal so there, there's the hope always for that but I, I don't know why it is so big in Finland maybe it, it has something to do with our genes uh, the way we grow up and how the general mood of the country we are not the most talkative quite quiet actually as a nation we do not talk too much and are, are sort of you get a, a shy expression out of us although we necessarily are not shy but it's it's we are very reserved and, and and all that musical heritage that we have, which is mostly melancholic stuff. So it translates very well in the heavy metal music, and then you know it's it's probably a big part of it, anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay, one thing that you said about now is about the rebellion about against something. I remember when when I was born in the eighties. All, obviously, the metal, the metal stuff was against something. I was Christianity, about society, about religion, so a lot of stuff. The metal was, it was at that time the same. Even the seventies, when our, our maiden or the big bands from the heavy metal appears, there's something against something because that's like rebel, as you mentioned, rebellion. The concept of the metal in that time uh, until the nineties was we are we are against. Anything we are against the society, we are against anything. So, but now the things are changed. As you can see now, this concept to be no well accepted. Like you, when you can see, I remember when I was on the on in the bus on the train, wherever wherever it was, I was with my t-shirt from Cannibal Corpse, and the people shock up. Wow, it's, it's a, a big shock up for the for the for the for the Cannibal Corpse t-shirts. But now it's very different. Now the people see a people. Now we are a headbanger in the in in the in the streets, long hair, anti much or perhaps painting the corpse paint, and that's normally because as you can see yeah. now, there's a lot of people doing these kind of jokes about the black metal on YouTube and a lot of things. So for this, do you think the metal in general lose their essence to be against something, and now is more well accepted and no need to be to be weird in some ways? Um, in a way, I, I think everything has been done already. I don't know what you should like <laughs> do to be extreme anymore, unless it's like playing skills and such. But it, like we have gone to very, very extreme. Like it's something that I find personally totally unlistenable. Like, <laughs> stuff, and it's been done. And then the mellow side has. Super mellow as well. So this everything is there already. So I don't know what someone should and could even find anymore that would have the same impact as 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 the old school black metal blood spilling, you know, bands that they they were like everybody feared them and and they were against religion and God and said I hate God and shots whatnot and they had had a huge impact on on people and relate to people and everybody, but it's been done already, everything. I don't know against who you should rebel. Politics, it's been done, and uh, religion, done. I don't know against what? Humanity. Well, that's been probably done as well many times over. So it's it's very hard, definitely. I don't know. <laughs> well, and yeah. even, even some of the shows have gone to extremes. Like, uh, like there's like Till Lindemann show was quite an extreme to one direction. I didn't see it, but I, I saw like video clips and, and photos from, from his solo shows. 
Brahms Danzinger. And uh, <laughs> everything has been done already. You just have to probably find, find a way, way to do things better. But it, it's rebellious. Rebellion has, has gotten very difficult. I, and I think it's more uh, one effective thing is to rebel against your own parents. And that will always stay current, I think. Do something that your parents hate. That's easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that is true. Well, talking about now re returning, <laughs> yeah. to the, <laughs> returning to the Sonata Artica, I usually ask this kind of question because when you Sonata, as I mentioned, the Sonata Artica has more than more more than twelve albums in your career. It's amazing, by the way, amazing by the way this achievement. So, but uh, during when you start this project, Sonata Artica, you start as a new musician, as a new composer, a lot of things you are new in this kind of aspect. That's normally Ecliptica has a little rawness because you are new in this new, in, in, in these new phases normally. But when you're still growing, 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 your skills as a musician get better. That's normal because you rehearsal more, you stay, you you do more presential live, you are you do a lot of tours. And now we are we have the results of, with this new album Clear Call Beyond. That's the new the, the new offer for the Sonata Artica. But with this with this set, the the fans think differently. The thanks the fans attach to the always, to the rawness thing. That's why a lot of people prefer the first two albums, the first two albums. And then mm. when you are get better, the fans don't think that. Don't don't think like that. I prefer the rawness of the first albums that the more well playing that you are doing doing now. So for you, what's your opinion about now this kind of aspect that the, when you are grow up as a musician, you in in some way lose the rawness or the, or perhaps the young the the young the young faces from Tony Kako on the on the nineties. Well, uh, yeah, obviously um, <clears throat> the rawness of the early album, the first album, for example, it is something. Uh, of, there's this feeling of danger and uh, doing something that you have never done before, and uh, it, the whole album, our album, Ecliptica, feels all the time. It, it feels like it's getting off the train, like rails. It's like a, a train about to derail, and but it stays there barely, and uh, it, it it has this excitement of youth and everything. There is something you cannot recapture anymore in the future. Even the second album, you probably cannot have that if you release it like two years after. You have probably, hopefully, done a lot of touring already with the first album and grown as a human as a musician, and uh, and uh, gotten more assured, certain of what you're doing and have more experience on everything. So you are not doing that thing anymore for the first time. It's not the same anymore. So, and, and and when it comes to fans, I think if you find the band with the first album and love the rawness of the thing, that's that's something that's gonna, losing that is gonna feel weird and, and bad and you're gonna complain about it. In the future with the album, the band gets better and and more evolves in in a direction and then gets more professional uh, but but then again there are a lot of fans who find the band and and the music with with the later albums like second album 10th album 11th album and uh for those fans it might be that the first album sounds like it's too rough too raw uh, and as an example you know i i remember falling in love with Queen in the middle of the 80s when they had like Radio Gagas and all those great hit songs. And then I started listening to early Queen. Although it is fantastic music, it felt too raw sound and everything. It was like too something that it was very hard for me in the beginning at first to sort of like it even to some extent. Although uh, it was clearly the same band, but everything was has evolved. Uh, to to the 80s uh, a lot. They have released a lot of albums and had a lot of tours and everything. Everything is, has gotten better in a way, but still, you know, so it's it's juggling like too many balls kind of thing. All of like you, you cannot win that race. You you cannot always every time record your first album uh, or record your album for the first time. You just you know lose something after that first album. And gain also, and even more so, I think. And also the case is, of course, that 
many bands who have been around for a while before the album actually gets recorded. The first one it, it's that you have had like many, many years, maybe even 10 years time to come up with these songs and choose the ones that you want to have on that first album. So it has also that edge. The, the material can be super strong, really. And then the future albums, you have to come up with the songs in half a year time or even shorter. Or sometimes even just, you know, compose the songs while you're already in the studio. And then it definitely, it'll show in some ways. Absolutely. Mm, But it's not necessarily always a bad thing. You know, there are diamonds that are forced under pressure. And I've, I've experienced that as well. You know, when you are forced to do something really hard and you have time pressure and everything, you might come up with diamonds. Mm, okay okay now talking about from the promotion from this clear call beyond what kind of plans do you have for this clear call beyond perhaps you will embark on tours you will do more videos or perhaps you will come and uh you you will come to Latin america again uh, a couple of weeks ago uh two weeks ago actually we uh, shot a video for our next single uh, it's going to be uh a uh, uh, dark Empath, and uh, it's going to be I think it's going to be a little late from the release of the single because I think that single is coming out tomorrow, Friday. But, but anyway, the video is on its way and it, it's going to be fantastic. Then the album will be released on, on March 8th. And around the same time, we will embark on the Finnish leg of the uh, clear Cold Beyond Tour. It'll be like three weeks or so. And then we are getting quite close to the summer festival season here in Finland. So we're taking time off and and yeah and then rehearsing and then coming up with set list for for uh, summer festivals and also the european tour that will start in september this year and uh at the moment we do not have any solid tour plans but i'm pretty sure as soon as the album is out there will be announcements of uh, a latin american tour and such we love love playing there and it's fantastic always to come back and funny detail actually uh, did i mention already that i wrote almost all the lyrics for this album on our Latin American tour a year ago. Yeah. Was... <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah. So that was funny detail, something, something totally different. You know, it's cold and dark and, 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 and snowy and everything here and full moon right now, actually. And it's, 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 uh, it was a little bit different writing the lyrics, sitting under a palm tree by the pool and having a drink on your hand. It was nice. I loved it. <laughs> nice, nice. Good. Good to know about these lyrics for this new album composed during your last tour. So amazing, especially in Mexico because the website yeah. was on that on on that gig on Monterrey. I remember, I remember the, your presentation in Monterrey. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so talking one, well, we are very close yeah. in this yeah. interview, <laughs> Tony, for this aspect. So and for this aspect, uh, so and we are talking now as as we are living. You mentioned one thing about the you as in some ways the people prefer to. To, to hear the rawness. And curiously, the vinyl are, are has a biggest success or our biggest comeback success into the media, selling a lot of a lot of records. Our oral labels are releasing all all presentations now are on vinyl and, and vinyl. And I think all these kind of sell outs, sell outs about this the, the vinyl is amazing. So what's your point of view about now the I think we are the metalhead in some ways, it's against to the digitality with the CD or the other platforms and prefers always the vinyl. Mm, uh, well, I love vinyl myself, uh, but mostly because of the artwork and, of course, the analog way of doing things. But there is this like tiny bottleneck on the whole thing that you should actually record the album also using only analog instruments and, and, and recording gear and then move on to make a vinyl out of that analog things. So it would be the pure experience when you put the needle on, on the on the disc and then start playing and spinning the vinyl. It, it would be absolutely perfect. But most of the music is these days, it's, it's recorded electronically. So <laughs> that already <laughs> leaves, that makes it a little bit like if the whole thing but but still it's i think it's it's a lot of it has to do with the feeling of the vinyl and it feels somehow better in your soul when you are putting the the album on on the on the you know plates there dropping the needle and oh, hearing the music it, it's 
it's fantastic. I, I love the fact that vinyls are back, but at the moment it, it, it's also one of the problems in the industry because it's so popular that whereas like a few years ago, it took two months or even less sometimes to get a, like CD and the album released after you deliver the masters to the record uh, the company. And, and, and it was fast, very fast. They were like weekly interviews and then, then on the road and the album is out and all that. But nowadays it came as a shock for us that when at the end of August, we delivered our parts to the label and we were told that it's going to take five months at least to get the vinyls so we can actually release the album. So the, the cap between the ready album and the release has gotten very long. But that's hopefully something that will fix itself eventually when there are more pressing plans coming along. And, and But they are currently super busy. And like I heard Metallica, for example, they purchased their own, which is a smart move for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Danny, the sad times are right this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me. To us, the first time, you're a terrific guy. Explain a lot of things for, for your point of view as the first time. So perhaps you want to add something to your Latin American fans that usually are waiting for the next come and obviously Medellin followers? Well, stay healthy, make a lot of ra rackets and, and uh, check out Clear Cold Beyond and uh, go see any kind of live bands that you might have in town if you can tolerate the music, although it's not necessarily your cup of tea or metal or whatever. If that band is playing your local venue where you usually go and see your favorite band, go and see that show, go and buy that shirt, because all that is going towards keeping that club alive as well. And, and it will be possible in the future for your favorite band also to be there. You are in fact keeping live music alive when you go and see a live band and, and buy a ticket to a show. So do that and we will see you next year, all right? <laughs>